Well, good morning. It's good to, to see you here. I want to welcome, welcome you. Tom will do that more officially in, in just a moment. You can tell by these boxes up here what time of year it is. It's Operation Christmas Child. Actually, it's been going on all year long, but uh, we're fixing to get serious about it. And uh, so on August the 29th, let me get my eyes where I can read. August 30th, I'm sorry, thank you. On August the 30th at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, we will have a packing party. This will be the first one. We'll do another one later, uh, closer into November, but this will be the first one. Our goal is to get 500 plus boxes packed um, in on this meeting in August. And so, Two things you can do. One, you can come to the packing party itself. We'll wear a mask. We'll get to spread out as much as we can and that kind of thing. But if you don't want to do that, you can pick up a box. You can get it packed yourself and then bring it. There will be a drop-off point on that day, and you can bring it and just drop it off and participate in that way. And so we just want to encourage you to do that. Remember, if we do 1,000 boxes, which is our goal, that's $9,000 in postage that we need. And so keep that in mind. And I had, I'm not sure. I'll try to know by next week what, how much has been given so far toward the postage. Uh, but it takes a lot to get, this, to get this done. And so I want you to be praying. And then if you can, if you feel comfortable, I want you to come and participate and be a part of the packing. Otherwise, pick a box up. We'll have boxes here every week. Pick as many as you want up. And uh, just make sure you pack them and bring them back. And uh, on that Sunday, there will be a drop-off point where you'll be able, able to do that. So there are, you can do a box for a boy or girl, and then you can pick an age, three age groups, 2 to 4, 5 to 9, and 10 to 14. And the 10 to 14 we end up needing, usually that gets slighted a little bit. So if you want to uh, help with that age group, then that would be a great one to any of them, but that one in particular. So I'm going to pray, and then we're going to watch a video. It's just a promotion about this year's Operation Christmas Child. Let's pray together. Father, Lord, thank you for the opportunity to serve you. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity to, to reach the world with the gospel by just giving gifts. And so I pray that as we move toward this day of, of getting ready to pack these boxes and and Lord, our desire to do as many as we possibly can so that more and more kids and their families can hear the gospel. And so would you bless the effort? Would you challenge us with it, Lord? And may we seek to make an impact and an influence in the world by giving gifts that the gospel can go forth, that people's lives can be transformed. And may it ultimately all be to your honor and to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Three, two, one. At the count of three, when children open the shoe boxes, they are so excited. Those faces just transform. Yeah, these kids behind me are so excited because they've just received their boxes. The mouth is wide open, the voice is raised, the smiles are all over. That box brings joy. We're right now in Phnom Penh in Cambodia. I mean, it's just been incredible. Kids are so excited. Giving them a gift, do it in Jesus' name. And that's what this is all about. Jesus loves you. It's a gospel opportunity. It's the chance for the children to change the entire life. That's what I love about Operation Christmas Child. It knows no borders, it knows no boundaries. It's all about sharing the name of Jesus Christ. Churches are doing big things with Operation Christmas Child. Everybody out there who packs shoe boxes, they are spreading God's love. It's families, it's churches, it's hundreds of thousands of volunteers that help make Operation Christmas Child so successful. We couldn't do it without them. With this box, they do get the gospel story. They do hear about Jesus. It has maximum impact in the worldwide kingdom of Christ. I mean, what better thing could you do than be involved in field shoe boxes? Some of them go by train, some go by camels, some go by ships. These boxes go all over the world, and that is only the beginning. After receiving the shoe boxes, the children will be invited to go through the greatest journey 
which is a 12 lesson discipleship program where they learn about the greatest gift, which is Jesus Christ. After a child completes the greatest journey, they graduate and receive a Bible in their own language. When the light of the gospel is turned on, that changes everything. Churches are being planted, lives are being changed, communities are being transformed. The word of God is spreading. The gospel is advancing. It is impacting children. It is impacting families. It is impacting the world greatly. Thank you for praying. Thank you for giving. I would like to ask you to consider packing shoeboxes year-round. God will bless, and God will use your gift to touch the life of a child and to be able to do it in Jesus' name. So thank you. Thank you for being a part of it. God bless each and every one of you. Stand and sing. Good to see you. Um, the video just really kind of impacts how simple a shoebox can affect kids around the world. So I just encourage you to join us on in August or can gather a box and, and put it together yourself. But uh, it's just amazing to see what God can do through something as simple as just a shoebox. So we hope you'll help us in that in that area. Uh, it's been a long, wild week for many of us, and uh, I've never experienced this in all my years of ministry, I guess over the last week and a half, 
We've had five church members that have been affected by the loss of a loved one. And I just want to thank many of you who have helped provide food and have served food and done so many different ways to, to minister to people this week and being the church. And we thank you for that. I do want to remind you that in the back, we have moved over a lot of uh, Sunday school material as well as monthly periodicals. If you would like to pick one of those up, they've kind of stockpiled a little bit because we've not been in Fellowship Hall. So I encourage you to pick those up this morning. Let's pray together as we continue to worship. Father, thank you for a beautiful day. Thank you for the, the, the opportunity that we are always given to come and worship. We thank you for that freedom. Uh, Lord, we thank you for who you are in our life. We thank you for the, the great comforter you have been this week and last week for so many in our church. We thank you for, Lord, just the ways that uh, you've allowed us to minister to people, that you allow us to be the church, and we thank you for that. Uh, Lord, we pray and we continue to pray for those who are, who are struggling in so many different ways, whether it be physically and emotionally, mentally. We, we pray for those people. We pray that you will use us as your church uh, to, to minister to the folks, to, to share love, to maybe not share hugs right now, but to, to share the, the good news of what you have done for us and as the world uh, searches and seeks for answers right now. Uh, thank you that you are that answer, and uh, we thank you for all that you're doing in our world right now. Uh, Lord, just continue to bless us as we worship this morning. Make us sensitive to your word, and uh, may it impact our lives so that we, uh, we change things about the way we do. And Lord, we go out into our community, into our world, and, uh, and Lord, make a difference. We pray for many of our students as they're pouring back into town and into campus. Uh, Lord, keep them safe. Keep us safe. And, uh, Lord, may we minister to them as they, as they return. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. In your name we pray. Amen. The great thing about the shoeboxes is, that in addition to giving gifts and the joy of that, is the, the presentation of the gospel, me gospel message. That's something that we don't have to necessarily go around the world to do. We can do it every day in our lives right here. Telling the story of Jesus. Let's stand and sing together. Tell the story of unseen things of love, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story because I know tis true. Wonderful. 
all must be well. Jasper and Matthew and Vicki. I'll just um, echo the words that, uh, that Tom said just a, a moment ago and just want to call attention also to the fact that school is starting back and, and students are getting back in place and there is a lot of anxiety on a lot of people's minds and hearts about that. And so one thing we can do in the midst of all this is that we can we can pray and many of you may remember that for the last couple of years there's a group of men led by Sammy Shoemaker from Bethel Baptist Church that have been getting together and praying at the different schools um, all through the school year and uh, the goal is to start that back but starting tonight um, they're going to meet at the Christian School and at the Academy, two different groups, at 7 o'clock. It's open to anybody, men or women, youth, whoever. And we'll just gather at those schools, two separate places, and we'll just, we'll just pray. I'm sure we'll wear a mask, we'll social distance, and uh, we'll call on the name of the Lord, and we'll ask Him to bless. And then the next Sunday night, every, before every school starts, we're going to gather at a school and pray. So next Sunday night, we'll be at Mississippi State on their campus praying. And then the following Monday, all week long, we'll be at a different public school leading up to the third, two Sunday nights from tonight, from this week. We'll be at the high school at Startwell High. And we'll close out because then the public schools start the following Monday on the 24th, I think it is. So, opportunity to pray. So I hope you'll, um, hope you'll take advantage of that. I plan to, to be there tonight. I'm going to the Christian school and uh, pray along with those that will, that will be there tonight. Turn in your Bibles, if you will, to John chapter 11, and we will get there uh, in just a moment. Like Tom, man, what a week. And 
Tom and I just need to say those kind of things um, just because. It's going to be really hard on, on a YouTube. You know, in, um, I don't know how many years you've been in ministry, Tom, but uh, this year is 41 for me. And there's never been a time that Thank you. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, he said that, um, that God has so composed the body that we exercise the same care for one another so that when one suffers, we suffer alone with them and and I know that our um, our pain is different than those families um, that have lost loved ones this week but um, but I realized that How, how painful it is as a church, even. And so I told the Lord, and, I, and I, I, I guess I said to God, I didn't tell him anything, but I, I said to the Lord, I just do not, I, I don't, I don't want to preach um, today about influencing our culture. Um, it's like it just, it just doesn't feel right. I don't want to do it. And, uh, and then, And then the, um, just the realization that, that not everything about influencing a culture is about all these ills socially that's going on in our world today. A lot of times it's just influencing people because of hurt and pain and the things that they're going through in their lives. And sometimes it's just being able to come alongside you know somebody and and to just be with them and and man in a in a time when there is in our world when there is so much death and dying and to know that we of all people we have such a great hope to be able to give and to offer and and so when I'm in my mind I'm 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 praying to God and I'm saying I just, I just don't want to preach about influencing culture. And the Lord just says in my heart, that's okay, because, because what, what really the influence can be in the lives of those who are, who are hurting and suffering. And I don't know if that makes sense to you, but it, it, does, it does to me. Um, I'm so thankful for the truth of God's Word. I've said this verse so many times this week. Um, we grieve, but not like those without hope. And I'm so thankful that to just be able to say to, um, to those that are suffering and those that are grieving, to be able to just say to them that, yeah, I understand as much as I can what's going on in your life. Uh, but at the same time, I'm so thankful that we have a hope in God that, that helps us to get through and to face and to deal with our own struggles and our hurt and our pain as we try to, to just walk our way, walk our way through it. 
And man, just to see God show himself strong and mighty on behalf of, of those families and our church. And I realized, I started to say a minute ago, Tom and I need to say things like this because um, you may not realize it, but as a pastor, there's a verse in Exodus that says that when God gave the priests their, their garments, that one of the things he gave to the high priest that would go into the inner holy of holies, it had rows of stones that had the names of the nation of Israel on them, and it was on the breastplate. And the implication was that as the priest went into before God, that he literally bore the nation of Israel when he went in. And, and I'm sure Tom would echo this, that, that the experiences that go on in your lives, and I'm just saying this just to say, I'm not asking you to feel sorry or anything like that. It just goes with the territory. But as a pastor, we take all of your burden and we take it upon ourselves. Yeah, we take it to God and we're able to do that. But you just cannot imagine as a pastor how taking the load of stuff that goes on in your lives and, and how, that, how that impacts us in, because we love you so much. And I just have to say that to you. And, and, and my desire today was, Lord, our, our church is hurting. Our church is, is in pain. And some of you didn't even know these individuals uh, that passed away. Uh, Mr. Roy Latham. Um, uh, Tony Thompson, Miss Nancy Gillis, uh, Tony's wife's mom died within hours of her husband dying. And just imagine the, the pain that, you know, that she... And all these are old people that have lived a full life and, and had faith in Jesus and, and the hope that is there because of that. But, but man, um, our church has lost some significant people who have contributed over the years so much into the lives of people within my own life, in the, in the life of this church. And um, some of you miss the blessing of knowing them, but, uh, but at the same time, we all suffer. When one suffers, we suffer along with them. So all week long, three funerals this week, all week long, God has, has just given me words to say to, whether it was the family or whoever, and God's given me words to say to you as a church today. Uh, because it really, it is. There, there's so much death and dying that's happening in this world that, that we can have an influence. We can take hope out there into this world. And in the midst of that, in offering comfort in the gospel to people in the midst of death and dying. Um, but God's given me three words that I want to just give to you this morning and and I hope you'll receive them as, as what God really wants to say to us. The, one, the first word is the word um, reality, is reality. And the reality is that death is a part of life, is it not? I mean, it, we understand that. Death is in, in our experience. The likelihood is everybody in this room has experienced someone who has died, has known somebody whose life has come to an end. Sometimes it's like the majority of these people this week who had lived a long, full life and their life, they just passed away. For some, it's, it's a prolonged illness as a younger person and, and the illness has ultimately taken their lives. For some, it's a tragic end and, and it hurts. Maybe it feels like it hurts even more when that, when that happens. But the fact is, that death and dying is a reality. In Genesis chapter 3, sin entered into the world. And Romans chapter 5, verse 12 and following says that because sin entered into the world and all sin and death passed to all men because all have sinned. And so the reality is that there's going to be death and dying until God finishes the work that he's going to do, that he's planning to do, to, to save people and ultimately lead to that time when sin and everything else is removed and taken care of. But until then, there is there's death and dying. The story, and I'm not going to read the whole text, but the whole passage, I'm just going to call your attention, you read it later, in John chapter 11 is the story of Lazarus. And Jesus got word that Lazarus was sick, and he waited two days after he got word before he ever went to Mary and Martha's house and when he finally got there, Lazarus had died. Got to the tomb. 
It's the story where he raised Lazarus from the dead. And there's an amazing interaction that goes on between, uh, between Jesus and Martha. And then ultimately when, uh, when Lazarus is raised from the dead. And, and, and what you find within that is that people get sick and people die. It is a reality of life. But the other part of that reality is, is that death hurts. Because in that whole text of, Roman, of, of John chapter 11, there is weeping. In fact, it's the one verse, the shortest verse in the Bible, in John 11, that says, And Jesus wept. Because He feels our emotion. He, he experienced the same kind of emotion and loss that had gone on in, in His life. Uh, it hurts. And as I tell people all the time, when you love someone deeply, then you grieve deeply when, they're, when they have died. And so it's just a reality. Death. It's a reality. Second word I want to use is the word help. Help. In the passage, it says that the friends of Mary and Martha had gathered at their house and they were consoling them. And the word there has the idea of speaking words of comfort. And just like Tom said a moment ago, man, to watch you as a church, as you rallied around the families, and not just this week, you had an uncle to die uh, more than a week ago, your mom passed away within the last 13 days. I mean, the numbers of family members that have passed away in the life of our church just in the last, the, the last few weeks. And... And to see people come alongside and help. And, and I'm, sure, I'm sure they were bringing casseroles to Mary and Martha's house. I'm sure they were supplying food and they were meeting needs and they were gathering around them. And I'm so grateful because, man, how would we make it? How could we make it without, without our friends and family gathering around us to be able to, to just be there and to encourage us and to support us? I watched... Uh, three times this week, well, two, Monday and then yesterday, Tony's family had their meal at their house. But just to watch the members of our church caring for these families and helping them. There, was, there were numbers of times when I was pastor on the Gulf Coast when the funeral home would call me and say, Hal, we have a family that has no church family and they're looking for a Protestant preacher to do their service. Would you be willing to do it? And there were only a few times that I said no to them, and usually because I had something else going on, because I thought, I can't imagine. I cannot imagine being at a, that kind of place in your life and having no church family to gather around you and no pastor to call on to pray for you or to just be with you or to help you kind of sort through the details of what was going on. And so it was always, even as difficult as it was, it was always a, a privilege to be able to stand with those families, but then to look into their faces and to see nothing but just blank stares because I'm like, they don't have any, they don't even know where to turn. They don't know what to do. But how would we make it without people who gather around us and who help us and who support us? So reality, the death is a reality. And then the word help, because we all need it. And it's important if we're going to get through things like this to find comfort. And the third word is this, it's the word hope. It's the word hope. This whole passage and the story of, of what was happening with Lazarus and his family is that when Jesus showed up, wherever Jesus is, there's always hope. There's always hope. And so Jesus, I do want you to look at these verses in John 11 and verse 26 or verse 25. Jesus said to her, to Martha, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? And what Jesus was doing and saying to Martha at that time, and what it says to you and me, is that in the midst of our grief, in the midst of the death of a loved one, as a believer, if we believe in Jesus, and especially if that individual believed in Jesus, then we are full of hope. Death is a reality, but it's not the final say. It's not the end. And in our world today where people have always been dying, but death is right in our face all the time because of this pandemic and 
We're told every day how many more people died, how many more people died. And that's what we're confronted with. Our health care workers are faced with that over and over again as they're watching people as they die because of, of this pandemic. And yet I'm telling you, that is not, that's not the final word. According to what Jesus says here, there is hope. And that hope is found within Him. In fact, He said, everyone... He who believes in me, verse 25, will live even if he dies. And what he means is that if a person has faith in Jesus and they die, they still will live because he's promising that there's going to be a resurrection of their body. And then he said in, the, in verse 26, he said, And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. And so, if death were to come to you or to me or to our family members and we're a believer, it's not the end because we have the hope that even if we die, we will live because God will raise, Jesus will raise our bodies from the dead. And he who believes and lives in him will never die. Meaning that whatever happens, and that's why the Bible refers to death as sleep, because it's only temporary. That body is placed in a grave. And there's ultimately coming a day that God will resurrect that body, soul and spirit, already in heaven with God. And He will resurrect that body and unite it in that body with the soul and spirit and forever we will be with the Lord. That is our hope. And so what Jesus is saying is that even in the face of death and dying, that there is hope in the, in the very face of it. And that's why, we can, that's why we can influence our culture. That's why we can go out there in this world where there is so much hopelessness because of death and dying, and we are able to share this good news of salvation, which is the hope of eternal life beyond this life, and it's all because of Jesus Christ and what He has done for us. Jesus looked at His own disciples in John 14, and He said, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in Me. In My Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Behold, I go and prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. The disciples said, we don't know where you're going. We don't even know the way. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me, but through me. That's hope. That's hope that he has given to us. In Revelation chapter 20, we are told that there is coming a day that God will take death and he will cast it into the lake of fire. And that final enemy, death, will ultimately be defeated and done away with. And then you come to Revelation chapter 21 where John says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth coming down. And he said, in that place there will be no more death, no more dying, no more sorrow, no more pain, no more suffering. And that is the hope that God gives to us. And so, just like Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, he said, we grieve, but it's not like those without hope. Because we have been given, we are full of hope. I'm telling you what, and Tom would amen this, we would be a basket case if we didn't have the hope of Jesus to be able to offer to families when we stood before them in the face of their suffering and in the face of their death. It's just what God has done. It's what He's done through His Son. And it is the very reason that we can get up in the face of everything that you, many of you have faced even this week, it's the very reason that you can get up and go and face tomorrow. And it's all because of what God has done for us and provided for us through the Lord Jesus Christ. Does that make sense? Man, that is, that is, what, that is what comforts me. That is what helps me. That's what helps me to keep going and to know that it is possible to, to make it through all of this. And it's only possible because of what God has done through His Son, Jesus Christ. You know what? I hope you know that. And forgive me for rambling today, but I hope you know in your own life personally, I hope you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That you've come to that place. If not, I hope, you will, I hope you'll come to that place today. And that you'll call upon the name of the Lord that you might be saved. And if you know it, I hope you tell your children your own story. I hope you tell your family your faith in Jesus and how you came to that place and the significance of that and what that means in your life because they're going to need to know that someday and to be assured of that when they stand by a graveside when we pass on. 
man, ultimately it's all because of that hope that's ours in Jesus Christ. I love that hymn. You're not planning to sing it, but I love that hymn. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. And praise God for that. Let me pray for you. Father, Lord, take, take your word, all this stuff, Lord, and I pray you just speak it into our hearts, God. I thank you for my church family. I thank you, Father, for, for just the encouragement that they are to Tom and me. I thank you, Father, for their prayers. And I thank you, Father, for the privilege to be able to serve here. But Father, beyond all of that, in the face of the reality that death happens, I thank you that in the midst of it, we have more than just comfort in this life that's given through the help of others. I am so thankful for the hope that is ours because of our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray, Father, that you give us opportunity to share that good news and that hope with those that are grieving and those that are struggling and those that are trying to find their way in the midst of all of this that's happening in our world right now. Help us, God, to clearly, powerfully, confidently share that truth with those who so desperately need to hear it. And may it be to your honor and to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.